think it's just the rite of passage of spring. It's a happy time, um, and it makes you happy when you see them peeking out of a fence looking at you. Daffodil Festival, which is year 42 now, by the way, um, is, is a reliable uh, launch for spring on the island. For me, the best part was always the picnic. And we would always do a ton of food and invite everybody to join in. And so if you make it to Wisconsin, you're just walking around, you don't have to have a car. You want to go out there and just walk from picnic to picnic to picnic. And uh, it's a great, just you know, a beautiful day. Of course, when it snowed a couple times, not so good. <laughs> The beauty of these is the fact that they're so hardy. You can plant them one year and they come up year after year. And the color codes are so spectacular. We were very lucky that Jean McLaughlin um, was a summer resident here. She loved daffodils. And she saw a way that we could beautify the island, get the whole community involved, and have a flower that would last for generations and happily the deer and the rabbits didn't eat them. Another reason why we don't have a tulip festival. I think the beauty of the, the Daffodil Festival and the way it all started is um, Jean was able to order a lot of bulbs and uh, actually Buddy Egan from Marine Home Center helped and partnered with her. And she made it a community event in that, I believe it was this large 18-wheeler that came in with you know, uh, quite a few bulbs. And the community would go down, get the bulbs from Maureen. She had little Burgey flags made up and you'd go along Milestone Road and when you saw a flag, you knew that's where the previous planting crew had stopped. And you picked up the flag and you planted some bulbs and you put the little flag back in the uh, edge of Milestone Road and carried on. So it, it was a type of project that whether you were, you know, a, a family doing it on a Sunday afternoon or Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, and any uh, youth groups, it was fun to be outside. And it was in the fall. You always plant in the fall for the following spring. So it gave a nice activity when it might not be beach weather. We were sort of a sleepy little island and she was using it as a way not only to beautify but to give some income to some of the year-round. She saw the year-round working people as struggling until the summer season actually arrived. And of course, she loved daffodils. Travel and tourism event, it's a tourist event uh, by and large at this point. It hasn't changed a whole lot in the 25 years that I've seen it. It's been pretty steady. Uh, I think there are two groups of people that come. I think uh, the Nantucket Garden Club does have a daffodil show that's very popular. And so you do get the flower enthusiast. In 1974 was when the first planting took place in preparation for the first flower show which was in the spring of 1975. The first show was held at the Boys and Girls Club and was sort of an introduction for the island to understand that there were more than just yellow trumpet daffodils. People saw varieties that they had never seen and sort of piqued the interest. She involved people from the American Daffodil Society who came and brought judges that were accredited in point scoring of the flowers and the rest is history on the flower show. But you're right in the sense that it's not really about the flowers and about the blooming entirely. It's about coming and celebrating and being a part of spring, getting your antique car out for the parade on Main Street. When the flowers had pretty much established themselves along the Milestone Road, um, Jean, the owner of an antique Rolls Royce, and with her background in food, um, decided we needed to have a parade. Jean uh, was a lot of fun. She loved to party and uh, she loved to do uh, luncheons out on her uh, patio. She'd have a gang on her patio. She loved her cars. She had uh, another, she had another, uh, it wasn't, it was an Austin Princess, but it was, uh, had a Rolls Royce engine and she actually wanted to give it to me at one point. And uh, I just didn't want to tackle it. It needed all kinds of work. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was real local. There were just local cars. 
Uh, Gene McCausland had the Rolls Royce out front, of course, and then Flint Ranny was right there. And uh, we lined up on um, Milestone Road, right along the bike path. And the cars went from the circle up to uh, about to Monomoy Road. That's about it. And we back in. And uh, that was a lot of fun, lining up out there. And then we drive into town from there. My first daffodil was in the Model A Ford from Young's Bike Shop. And uh, 1976, we bought that from Bill Fisher. It was an actual car parade. And the parade would come down Orange, and we'd go to the island home, and the old folks would come out and see us. And then we'd go over to, um, uh, where did we go? We went to another one. We went by the hospital, went through the hospital, back when they had people actually staying at the hospital, you know, older folks that had moved in. And then we went downtown and drove up, did a loop around Center Street Broad and came up Main and then headed out to Wisconsin for the picnic. So it was a daffodil parade and we didn't stop in town. I think cars bring, bring something out in all of us. I mean, it, to drive an old car or to even to look at an old car, there's a lot of nostalgia, right? And uh, everybody's got a car memory. You got your favorite car from when you were a teenager and you always aspired to have that car. And for my era, a lot of it was like Mustangs and muscle cars from the 60s, right? Give me a split window Corvette, you know? Not ideal for Nantucket. But then the old cars, they're just, you know, they, they, they're nostalgic. This car here is a 1934 Ford. It was in the movie The Way We Were with a couple of people you probably know, Robert Redford and that other lady. What's her name? Um, Barbara Streisand. My dad and mom, Roger and Cynthia, they loved that car and they would take it to Daffodil sometimes. And they loved that car, they loved putting their friends in the back and driving around and feeling really special. And it was a lot of fun. I think an old car makes you feel special. I think the general public really likes to have a good time. And this is a wonderful way in the springtime um, to wear your green and yellow and do your fancy hat, to have a, a, a parade with your, your pooch all decorated with a daffodil collar. Well, the whole scene on Main Street, I think, is, is really special for people who come to visit and to see that kind of activity. I mean, the people are jammed in there, and it's just photogenic, right? It's, if you get a good day, it's somewhat protected from the wind on Main Street. You're tucked in, everybody's in a good mood. You got people in all kinds of outfits. The cars are decorated and look fabulous. It's about coming to enjoy food and drink and the company of friends that you haven't seen all winter long.